Hello, Richard here. And today I've got quite an interesting video for you, which is where we're going to be basically designing and making a camera mount. It's going to be 3D printed with a little bit of metal work, but not too much metal work if you're not into that sort of thing. And I'm going to take you through the entire process of uh, talking about what is it we want to do and how we're going to do it. We're going to sketch up a few ideas of how we're going to make this camera mount, and then we're going to design it in CAD. I'll walk you through that. We'll fire up Fusion 360 and I'll uh, show you how to design that in CAD. Then we're going to take it into a 3D slicing program, which is where you basically take your 3D model and you then get that into a file format that you can then send to your 3D printer. Then we're going to 3D print it. And we say we've got, we've got a little bit of metal work to do, but don't sweat that. If you're not into doing metal work, there's a, I'll show you a way around that so you can avoid that as much as possible. Um, and then at the end of it, we'll have a, a handy little camera mount. Now, don't worry if you don't specifically want the type of camera mount that I'm making here, because this is quite a specialist one for me. What we're going to go through here applies to all kinds of things that you might want to make. You know, the whole process, the whole kind of uh, thought process and the design process and modeling things up in CAD and slicing them for 3D printing and then 3D printing and whatever else. So whatever it is you want to make, this video would be relevant to that. So if you think, well, I don't really want that particular type of camera mount, this is relevant, then I'm sure there's something you'll get from the video anyway. Hopefully there is. Anyway, hopefully you'll gain something from it. Um, so let me just tell you a little bit about what it is that we're going to be doing here. Um, I need to be able to film my hands, not literally just like that. But I mean, if I'm doing something on a bench, if I'm making something on a bench and I want to show you something, I want to be able to film from top down. And that's that's quite tricky in a way um, because you've got to get a camera sort of floating in midair. Now you could stick it on the ceiling, I suppose, or um, you could put a tripod on the desk. But what I thought the best way to do it would be to use some of these microphone boom arms. I've got a couple of these. And with these, what I can do is I can actually, if I could fit a camera and grab a camera onto the end of a boom arm like that with some kind of suitable mounting thing, some sort of bracket, then I can then position this over the desk. Imagine this is over a desk like so. And I, this ought to be at a bigger height. And then I can arrange the camera so it's looking straight down. And there you go. Now, the good thing with this is that if I'm doing something on the bench, that's quite heavy duty and I'm shaking the bench because this is sitting on the floor, it's not going to be vibrating. It's not going to be picking up any movement. It's not going to be doing this and giving camera shake. The video I did the other day with the uh, mini lathe, uh, one of those videos I actually had the tripod on the bench. And of course, when you're cutting metal with the lathe, the whole thing's vibrating and everything just went blurry and horrible. So learned a little bit of a lesson there. But um, that's basically what we want to do. So what we're going to do is we're just going to talk about what it is I need to do. So like in any design process, the first thing you need to really do is understand the question. So first rule of design, always understand the question. The question is the, what is it that we want to do? We're not worried so much about how we're going to do it yet, although we've got a fair idea, but this is just what do we want to do? What I want to do is I want to get this camera and fix it on the end of this bar. Now I've got some uh, camera mounts that I've made. I've 3D printed these little camera mounts with a GoPro, so I can clip my GoPro in there and this has standard sort of tripod screw fittings, uh, 420 UNC screw fittings. So this can be screwed onto a tripod. That's what I'd normally do. I would put that on a tripod camera mount and film away. But I want to be able to put this on here like this. Equally, I may want to put a webcam on there. So if I, uh, for example, have this uh, little Logitech webcam, this has a camera tripod mounting screw on here. So I may want to be able to fix that onto one of these as well and have that pointing in various directions. So let's sort of just look at what what exactly we want to do here. So if I just take this end piece off, because we won't need that, that's for uh, if you actually want to put a microphone on the end of one of these. So what I want to do is have it so that the camera can point down and I've got a screw in the top of this. So I want some sort of clamp on the end of here, which we're going to 3D print because that's the easiest way for me to do this and we'll have a clamp this needs to go this way up and what's quite important is that this has to be able to move in this axis in a vertical axis this has to be able to rotate like that because this is probably going to come from the floor across the desk at an angle and if this was fixed at the same angle of the as the boom then i'd be filming sort of diagonally 
So I want to be able to rotate the camera around. So that's something we need to take into consideration. When we design this, we need to consider that we need to be able to rotate this around. Moving it in this axis isn't so important. That's not really the idea of this. Although I suppose to do that, we could just rotate around this. That would give us one axis of movement, but we need that axis as well so we can tweak that. Thinking about the problem, what we need is some sort of clamp that can go over here. We need to be able to put it on there and fix it on firmly. So it needs some kind of clamping, some sort of screw or a clamp to hold it tight. And then for this, we need, we're obviously going to need a screw to screw this in, which is going to be a standard sort of uh, tripod 420 UNC or quarter UNC threaded bolt. The next thing we need to do is take a few measurements because we need to know what size we need to make this thing. So we'll take a couple of measurements, then we'll do a bit of sketching and see where we end up. So to do the measurements, I'm going to use a caliper. I've got a digital caliper, which is, I've got to say, it's one of my favorite tools, this one. I use it all the time. And uh, what we'll do is we'll just get this on here and I'll measure this. And that's coming in just under 15.5 millimeters. We'll have a look at the other one as well, see what size that is. If I can remember how to work it, let's try that. There we go. Okay, I'll take the end off this one as well, because we won't be needing that for what we're doing. So we'll just measure this one as well and see what that's like. So 15.4, let's measure it in a few places, 15.3, 15.6, 15 15.5. So we'll just recheck this one a few times different positions, 15 point, so they're both about 15.5 millimeters diameter. So that tells us the uh, size of the hole we're gonna need in the clamp. That's kind of it, that kicks off the process. So what we'll do, we'll head over to the blackboard, we'll do some sketches and then we'll see if we can come up with a bit of a design. So let's, uh, let's hit the blackboard and uh, crank out some virtual chalk and come up with some ideas for what we're going to do. Now, I always find it's a good idea before going into the CAD program and starting to actually design things in CAD. It's always a good idea to have a really sort of strong mental image of what it is you want to make. There are times when you just hit the CAD program and you can design things and everything flows together. But other times you might find yourself taking a bit of a wrong turn early on in the design and you can kind of paint yourself into a corner if you're not careful. So the more you can sort of work out beforehand, the better. So let's um, let's have a bit of a sketch up of what we're talking about here. So we've got the, the boom for the uh, mic stand. We're gonna have some kind of clamp over that. So we'll have some sort of block of some kind that's gonna go over the arm there. We'll work out the sizes as we go and that'll come through the, the, uh, the block there. What we need to start to do is to sort of just work out some of the things that we want to do with this. Now, like I say, this is a fairly simple design, so we don't have to think too hard about it. But even so, we can still save ourselves a little bit of bother by uh, doing a few sketches. And you don't have to sketch it out like I'm doing here. You can just uh, pencil on the back of a cigarette packet is all you need. Thinking about how we're going to do this clamp, I'm guessing that what we'll probably do is we'll have the camera will be stuck under here. So we'll have a camera stuck under here somehow. That's probably the worst drawn camera you've ever seen. So the camera will be under there facing down. And then over this side, we'll probably have some sort of bolt to clamp the whole thing together. So let's kind of have a look at how we're going to do that. If we look at the clamp side of it first. So if I draw the boom, this cross section, looking at it end on, we'll sort of draw in the clamp roughly. And this is only rough. This isn't perfect. So this is what the clamp might look like if we looked at it from the side. And then what we could have is we could have a, a bolt through the clamp here. So that'd be the bolt. And this piece would be threaded. So the bolt would screw in and clamp that together. Then on the other side, we'd have our camera bracket. Now the camera bracket I made for the GoPro would go something like this. We'd have the bracket, which has got a quarter UNC threaded hole here. And the GoPro itself actually slots in there like that with a lens here. And that would then be looking down like that. So what we need again here is we need a bolt through here, which would be to actually bolt on the tripod mount, the camera mount. So whether it's a GoPro with an adapter or a webcam, we'd have that kind of arrangement. So there's a few things we can refine with this. Um, if we go back to the clamp side of things with this screw here, uh, I'm not too fussed about having that anything fancy. We're not probably going to be taking this clamp off on and off very often. So that can just simply be um, a slotted screw, probably like M6 or something like that. 
and that's going to just bolt through a hole in there. So the screw would be sort of something like that, and it would be going down in there. Now with this, with the clamp here, we don't have to have this all sort of big, square, and bulky. We can economise on the uh, on the plastic a bit. So it's a good idea if you're 3D printing something to use the least plastic possible because if you use less plastic, it'll print quicker and it'll be cheaper because you're using less plastic. Rather than having all these sort of big square edges and things, what we could do is, let me just rub this out a minute. So we, what we could do, let me just remove all this as well as we refine things a little bit, is we could bring this up a little bit. This doesn't, this doesn't have to be very thick, this piece. All it's got to do is clamp. And in fact, if we have this a little thinner, it'd be better because it'll be springier. If we make this too thick, if we made this really thick up here, then it's going to take a lot of force to bend that down and close the clamp up. So making this a little thinner will only help. And then we could come across there like that. And same again on this side, where we're going to have the bolt for the GoPro. It doesn't need to be very thick. It just only needs to be thick enough just to hold the camera. So again, on there, we can look at uh, making that a bit thinner as well. So maybe with that, this could come down. Even this thickness would probably be enough. It doesn't have to be very thick at all. So it gives us an idea of the sort of shape we're looking at. So on here, we'll just sort of redraw this bolt in just to give us an idea again, like so. And over on this side, we need a bolt. Now you can see straight away there's a problem there. If we did that, we couldn't get actually get a bolt head in because it would actually clash with this piece here. So what we'd need to do is extend that over somewhat. So let me see if we can just uh, move that over and we'll get rid of all of this scribble for a moment. Let's just take the whole side off there. And what we can do is we can extend that out a little bit further like that. Maybe we need to have this a little bit longer. So then we can have the camera mount bolted underneath, like so. And then our bolt can go through here, like that. And then we've got plenty of clearance in here so that the bolt's not gonna hit the side. So focusing a little bit more on the bolts for the uh, tripod adapter. What we're going to want to do with that is I want the bolt to be a captive bolt. In other words, if I undo this, I don't want it to fall out and do that. I want it to remain captive within the, uh, the bracket. So what we'll do with that, if we just draw the bolt out here. So if I just drew a bolt like this, imagine there's, a, say, a slot in the top like a screw. We can just remove that. It. What we want is for the screw body to go down like this and then for the thread to actually stick out wider. Like that. And then what that means is that if on this green bit here, let's say where this part is here, if we make that so that it comes in something like this with a little bit of a thread and then a step and then it goes down like that. And do the same on the other side. This isn't exactly to scale, but it hopefully gives you an idea. And then that's sort of cut off there. So that's the sort of cross section through that green bit. What it means with this screw is that when we, when we screw this in, the thread here will actually thread through this part of the uh, clamp and then the screw can't pull back out. If you try and pull the screw out this way, it's going to hit the thread. So that's how we can do a captive screw. Now we're going to be machining this screw on the lathe so we can make this fancy shape. Now, like I said, if you don't have access to a lathe, it's not a problem. You can just use a normal quarter UNC 20 bolt and you'll be absolutely fine. Now, one other thing I am going to do with this is we'll, we'll make a custom head for the screw. So the actual bolt itself, when we make that, so when we make the actual bolt, the bolt itself, we'll make it so that it's a piece of steel and it's got a thread on it that sticks out a little bit at the end, like this roughly. We'll get the measurements all worked out properly. And then on the top, what we'll do is we'll extend the top up, say like that, but we'll put a flat on it. So if you look at it from this way, you'd have a round shaft like that and it would have a flat. And then what we'll do is we'll design and 3D print a knob for the top of that. Because this is something we're gonna probably wanna undo quite often. 
unlike the clamp itself where we'll clamp it and probably leave it with the screw thread we're going to want to be able to undo that so what we can do with that is we can design up some kind of knob to go on there which will be sort of like this if we sort of draw it like this roughly so if we had like a a big piece like that with a little piece coming down in there then this part of the shaft here this would then fit up inside there like that inside the knob and the flap means that um the knob's got something to grip on and then on the knob itself we can just um cut some little semicircles out as we go around in the design sort of give it something to grip so we can make it more tactile as it were and we, we can make that quite big so it's quite easy to get at now the only other thing to really think about i suppose before we just start designing it is the size of the actual block in terms of this dimension here how wide do we make it so this doesn't need to be too wide the, the only real consideration with this is that the wider we make it in this dimension the firmer it will grip onto the bar but it doesn't really matter too much so that's not too much of a worry on that one uh, the only other thing I guess to look at would be what sort of shape we'd make this block looking down from above. So with that, we probably we'll probably make it so that if you look at it from above, it's it's pretty much square to be honest. We may radius the the corners a little bit, round it off a little bit. But one of the things you've got to consider when you're making something to three D print is how you're actually going to print it. You see, a big part of designing something to 3D print is you have to design it so it's actually 3D printable. When I first started designing things for 3D print, I would make these most elaborate things because I thought I can print anything I want now. I can print, oh, you name it. I can just print all these amazing mechanisms and that I can just print whatever I like. So I haven't actually got to make it with my own bare hands. That isn't how it works. So the way it works with 3D printing is basically you've got a flat bed that you print onto and everything has to build up from that that kind of dictates what you design. So for example, you can see here, if we look at our bit of a design over here, we zoom in a bit. So you can see here on this clamp through the cross section, we've got this nice flat surface here. That would lend itself very nicely to being put on the print bed so that the thing can print up in this direction. But the problem with doing that is then that the clamp, the layers when you print it would be like wood grain. They'd be like, say, laying like this. So it means that this would be a potentially a very weak spot. And when you clamp it, that would crack. What you want is for the uh, the strands of filament that make this up when you print it to actually run around there, like sort of, like say, like a wood grain. So you get more strength. So what that would suggest then is that it's really when you print it, you're going to want to rotate it through 90 degrees. So you, you're actually going to sort of want to rotate it that way and then print it this way up. So you'd actually have it printing like this. Say so if this was the clamp. And these are the holes looking down. Look, this is looking down from above. And you would actually have then, this would be on the print bed. So this would be the print bed here. And you'd print it this way up. So... What that means is if you then wanted to say radius these corners, you can you can print, it will print a radius. You can vertically print a radius like that with no supports. But this would lend itself much more to the 3D printing process. So that is definitely something you need to consider when you're 3D printing things. You have to be sympathetic to the medium. So you can't just design any old thing. You have to design it in a way that it can be printed. But anyway, that should be plenty enough ideas to get us started. So now we can head over to Fusion 360 and start to actually design this for real and uh, get some dimensions down. All right, so we'll see you over there. Okay, let's get into Fusion 360 and start to design some things. So to create the 3D model of the camera adapter, we're gonna be modeling it in Fusion 360. If you're not familiar with it, Fusion 360 is a really good uh, CAD package for 3D modeling parts that you wanna manufacture either through 3D printing or uh, CNC milling or turning or whatever your manufacturing process. And the great thing about it is it's a full-blown, full-fat, professional-grade CAD package. And it's written by Autodesk, who originally created AutoCAD. They also are the people behind Maya. So if you ever heard of Maya, the CGI sort of 3D modeling package, Autodesk are behind that. And Fusion 360, the great thing about it, apart from it being fully featured, is it's free for personal use. So if you're using it for hobbies or just personal use, 
Fusion 360 is absolutely free. The free version of Fusion 360 has fewer features than the fully paid one, but not so many as you'd notice. If you're just using this for hobby use, then this has got everything you're really going to need in it. So anyway, let's crack on and start our design. So here I am with a blank Fusion 360 document. And you can see this thing at the top is a component. This is like the root component. What we're going to make is going to have three components to it. It's going to have the camera bracket itself. It's going to have the screw and it's going to have a knob that we're going to attach to the screw. So we'll need three components. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click at the root here and say new component. And we'll give that a name, which will be say uh, body. Hit OK. Now we've got a component called body. And while I'm at it, I'll set it up with the others. So we'll have a component called a uh, screw and we'll have a components new component and we'll call this one knob and we're all set so what we'll do we'll start with the body and i'll just hide the other two not that they're, they're visible anyway but um, we'll hide those and what i want to do is just show the origin because everything in fusion 360 starts with a sketch so when whatever you're going to make you start off with a sketch and you draw what it is you want in 2D and you extrude that into 3D. So we'll start with a sketch. So by showing the origin here, I've got some surfaces I can select. So I'll right click on this plane and then create a sketch. And now we basically draw the 2D cross section of what it is we want to make. So I'm going to hit C for circle, click the middle. And now we decided that, um, that our bar is 15.5 millimeters diameter and we want the clamp to go over that. So when you're 3D printing, things have a tendency to shrink. So if you design something to be 15.5 millimeters, like a 15.5 millimeter diameter hole, when you actually print it, that's likely to shrink because hot plastic shrinks, hot anything tends to shrink really. So what we tend to do is over oversize holes in the design so that they shrink to be the right sort of size and it's a bit of a it's a little bit of a guessing game so i'm going to just go with my sort of uh experience and intuition here and i'm going to say that if we want a 15.5 millimeter hole we probably want to make it 15.8 so we'll go up by 0.3 of a mil and then when we're, when we're all done we'll just print a few layers of it and then we can see if that's the right sort of size and go from there if it isn't we can come back and tweak okay so let's go 15.8 for our hole that's the central hole and then we're going to need a thickness around that hole for the clamp so i selected the hole and hit o for outside or offset even and i want to make this six millimeters thick so hit six press enter and here we've got this start of our design so we've got the hole in the middle and then we've got a, a wall around the outside that's going to form sort of the body of the clamp so the next thing i want to do is we'll do a line so i hit l for line and I'm just going to select the bottom of the circle there. And I'm going to draw a line out horizontally. You see, we get this little sort of ground icon, the blue icon just to the right of the mouse pointer. So I'm just going to drag that out some distance and I'm going to drag up some distance and then I'm going to drag back in and I'm going to click on the inner circle there. And that basically defines the beginning of our sketch. And when you're sketching like this, don't worry too much about getting it perfect straight away the main thing is just to sketch things in and then add you add dimensions adding dimensions constrains the sketch to make sure that everything is of a given size and it's also really important if you want to come back later and change something um, we'll talk more about that in a bit but um draw first and then dimension it so i'm going to hit d for dimension select this line and i'm going to drag out a little bit and i'm just going to give this a dimension of, say 45 millimeters i don't really know yet what size i want to make it but that'll do as a guess and then the thickness of this bottom piece. Now, this is going to take the thread for the clamp. We're working on the clamp side of this. So I'm going to make this, say, let's go eight millimeters thick. So just hit eight, enter. And eight millimeters thick should be plenty enough thread for the screw to grip into. Uh, next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to draw the top part of the clamp. Hit L for line. Click on that somewhere and then we'll just click along again we'll click up and then we'll click into here and what we've done there basically is draw started to draw the sort of the uh, the shape of the clamp now the top of the clamp this uh doesn't need to be quite so thick perhaps so we'll hit d to dimension this and we'll dimension this at say let's try six millimeters so slightly thinner on top do i want to stick with that 
No, I'm going to double click on that and do eight. See where that looks. All right, we'll go with it. We'll keep them the same thickness. The top and the bottom will be the same. Now, this gap in the middle, we want this to be um, not too thick. We don't want this to be too wide or too narrow. So I think probably, say, two millimeters gap in between here. So what I'm going to do to do that is I'm going to basically, this bottom line here, I'm going to anchor that. I'm going to fix that by clicking the uh, padlock. So this line is now fixed, and it means that anything else I do is not going to cause this to move. I want this to be fixed in position now. Now, the next thing I want to do is get it so that these ends line up. So I'm going to select the edge of the top piece, and we'll select collinear. Uh, collinear makes things line up linearly or on the same plane. Not that it's a plane. If it's 2D, it's not a plane, but you know what I mean. Things line up that way. So we click on there. So these two now line up nicely and they've got a constraint so that they will be forever lined up now. If, if I move things around, then they'll stay aligned with each other. All right, next we'll hit, uh, we'll escape from that, we'll hit D for dimension and I'm going to select these two lines and we're going to want to make them say two millimeters apart. So two, and you can see how when I hit two, the, the, um, the whole top is just moved down and that's the beauty of if you put all your constraints in and you get all your dimensions in, then as you tweak things, everything else moves with it. And if you get that right, it makes for a very, um, a very enjoyable experience because everything just kind of falls into place, especially later on. Like I said, if, uh, if you come back later and you want to tweak a dimension, just being able to change one dimension and the whole sketch kind of just moving in sympathy with that is really useful. So that's that side done. We'll do the other side now, which is going to be where the, uh, actual tripod adapter screws onto. Before we do that, let's just have a think about the dimensions that we're going to need on this side here for the clamp. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a circle. I'm going to hit X, or I could click here, construction for line type, because um, I want to just do a construction line. I'm just going to draw a circle, which is going to help me to know what size the bolt head is going to be over on this side. Now, if this is a six, M6 bolt, it's going to have a, um, a 13 mil 13 mil across the flats. So I'll make a 13 mil diameter hole, hole circle, that's what I meant. Um, and then we can sort of put this in place and sort of see, if you imagine this is sort of looking top down, I'm just trying to sort of gauge what sort of size the, the, the head of the bolt will be next to the clamp so that it doesn't clash with this piece here. So if I sort of move it around here, then that sort of shows me that to the left of this circle, it's quite a bit of free space. So what I can do is I can change this lower dimension. Let's say take that down to 35 and watch how this will all move together. Hit 35. Uh, that's not bad, actually. I think that's probably enough. We don't need much space. Any space to the left of the screw head is kind of not really doing anything anyway. So I reckon that's pretty good. So I'll just take this circle. We'll uh, delete that for the moment. Just, oops, let me just select that and hit delete. There we go. Okay. Right, so now let's move on to the other side. That side, I guess, if you're looking at it this way. And what I'm going to do, because I'm happy with the sort of dimensions of this, I'm just going to take this line here, this bottom line, I'm going to mirror that. So I'll click on mirror, and then I'm going to select the middle axis here. Oh, mirror line, middle axis, and you can see that's mirrored that line. Click OK. So now we've got a mirror of this bottom line. Just saves a bit of time, really. And we need to put in the protrusion here that's going to accept the hole for the screw thread and the camera mount. So we hit alpha line. Now I'm still in construction mode, so I need to press X to get out of construction mode. Otherwise, we'll just be drawing a dotted construction line. So I'll hit there. We'll make this 8 mil thick. Type in 8, hit enter, and then line again, L, click here, and then we'll click the edge of the circle there. Hit escape just to go back to the pointer. And we'll just have a quick look at what we've got here. I think that looks pretty good, actually. Um, that should be all the bits we need for now. So that's basically our 2D cross section done. So now we hit finish sketch and it sort of flips into this view. And then we can extrude this up into a 3D object. So all I'm going to do now is zoom in a little bit and we just click the home button there to get me uh, lined up a bit more. And as you hover over these shapes, they'll illuminate and you can click on them. So I'm going to hold shift and click all the shapes that I want to extrude. So that's the shape of our uh, bracket. Then I hit E to extrude. 
And you see we get an arrow and we also get a box. You can either, you can drag the arrow up or you can type in a value. So I'm going to type in, say, let's try 50 millimeters. Hit enter. And I'm looking at that thinking that might be a bit too much. That might be too um, wide or high as we're looking at it. Now, the great thing with Fusion 360 is it's a parametric modeling package. So what that means is that as you, every step that you take in your design gets recorded as a step in the timeline at the bottom. So if you look down here, you can see these steps. And the great thing with that is it means that you can sort of rewind and fix things. If you did something, say, 15 steps ago, you can go back and you can tweak that and fix it. So because I made this too high, rather than you might think, okay, well, I'll come in and I'll just cut a piece off. You don't need to. You can just go back and correct the step you made. So if I select this extrude one feature here, I can just come back in here and I can say, okay, we'll try 40. And we'll okay that. And that I think that looks a bit better to me. It doesn't have to be really heavyweight, so that's probably enough. The only reason I probably want to make this taller that way would be if it if I made it and it wasn't grippy enough, if it didn't clamp hard enough, I might make it wider, just have more surface area to grip on with. So strength doesn't really come into it with this. It's not really an issue. Okay, so now we can start to refine things a little bit. What we'll do is on here, we'll put a fillet in here. So we'll do modify fillet or fillet. I've heard it pronounced various ways. I call it a fillet. You can call it a fillet, potato, potato, whatever you fancy. Um, so that's a, a five mil fillet there. Now, when you're doing this, you don't want to make this go too curvy because otherwise you're just losing the flat area that the bolt head can sit on. So you, you need this to be fairly inobtrusive. So five mil, I think looks pretty good there. We'll okay that. And then we'll come and we'll put a fillet on here as well. And again, we can just press F for that. That's a shortcut. And we'll just drag that up. At five mil, I think that looks good there. Hit enter to accept that. And uh, that's looking pretty good. Now these inner corners here, we can put a fillet on those as well. So select that and do F. And we're just doing this by eye to make it sort of look a bit better really. And again, here we've got a harsh edge there. So I'll click that F and we'll just relieve that a little bit. That'll probably do. One of the reasons for doing that would be if you imagine when we're printing this, the 3D print head is gonna be winging along here and it's gonna to have to come here and turn a corner and go around here and, so on. I always feel that if you provide sort of smooth corners for things like that, then it gives the 3D printer an easier time. Instead of the printhead having to come in here and then sort of almost stop dead in reverse direction and shoot around here, now with the curve, it can just ride around the curve and it's going to uh, reduce wear and maybe speed things up a bit. But that's, that's really the reason for that. That's why I've done that. Um, I mean, it's also a good idea as well if you're designing anything engineering wise to avoid really sharp corners unless you have to. Um, because sharp corners also create stress points where things can crack. Right, so let's have a look at the edges. Let's fill it the edges off as well, like the edge corners. So I'm going to select the first edge, hold control, and I'm pressing and clicking the mouse wheel with shift selected to rotate this. And I'm just shift clicking the edges so that we select all the edges. And then we'll hit F again and see where the arrow appears. That's always a bit of a lottery. And we'll just basically radius these corners a little bit. So I think that looks, let's have a look. That looks pretty good. Okay. Now we're going to be, we're going to be printing this this way up. So this, this is how it's going to sit on the print bed and it'll print up layer by layer. What I found is that if you actually print radiuses like this, radiuses, radii, um, curves, maybe what <laughs> uh, terminology again is great, isn't it? Um, if you print shapes like this, um, you don't need to put any supports on this. The 3D printer should be able to print this as an overhang well enough to get up to the top. So it's quite a neat way of doing it. And I always try and avoid printing things with supports if I can. It, things without supports print more quickly and they use less plastic and there's less cleanup to do. So like, as I say, you have to be sort of sympathetic to the medium. You know, when you're 3D printing or designing for 3D print, you have to sort of consider how it's going to print and do your design to give your 3D print the greatest chance of success. It's very easy to kind of design something that's really difficult to print. And a few little changes can make it a lot easier. Okay. The other thing with this as well, by radiusing these corners, we're saving plastic. So if we made these edges square, it would work fine. It would be perfectly fine. Wouldn't make much difference. But it would just be 
printing extra plastic that we don't want to use so we can save plastic and save money and it's less work for the printer to do so it saves electricity and it's quicker it's quicker to print all right so we're almost there with that let's um we need to have some holes in this now so let's have a little think about what we've got here so if i go around the back here what i want is i need a hole here for the uh clamp screw to go into and i need a hole at the other end for the uh, camera mount screw to go in so again everything in fusion 360 starts as a sketch pretty much so i'm going to select this face right click create a new sketch and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to add some points in i'm going to add a point let's have a look i'll add a point in i'll tell you what, what i'll do before that make life easy for ourselves what i'm going to do i'm going to hit l and then x to draw a construction line and you see if i hover here in the middle i get this little triangle it means the middle of the line so i'm going to click here and just draw a construction line across to the other side and then i'm just going to hit escape because we're done with that and what let's have a look up here so we've got this line here so let's see if we can draw a construction line on that as well so let's go l again and we'll draw from there down to the corresponding points below and then we'll do the same over here so we'll draw from here up to here and this is just giving me some guidelines that i can uh, use to position the points that i need well what we're going to do is if we go to create and then point point lets you basically put a dot let me undo the construction line mode while i think about it by pressing x uh, point lets you put a dot somewhere that you can anchor something to later so the idea here is i'm going to put a point on the sketch and then in a moment we'll go back to the 3d view and we can actually make a hole there so what i'll do i'm just going to click on front up in the top right just to get this nice and square again and let's have a look actually what i want to do i i, I want to get the middle point of this line but i can't because the midpoint of this construction line is actually in the middle so i'm just going to delete that line again so let me select it hit dell what i'm going to do instead i'm going to do l and x to get a construction line this time i'm going to go from the center point of the edge just to that line and i'll do the same over here center point of the edge over to the line hit escape and now when we create our point it'll snap to the center of this line which is where i want it so sort of centered vertically and horizontally in this sort of web so we'll put a point there and then we'll put another one there similar position and we'll finish sketch so now what we can do is we can drill a hole through the model and this will be the hole that takes the thread we can use m6 so we need an m6 hole now what we can do here is just hit h for hole select that hole there and you can see it's come up with this massive great big hole which is not what we want uh so what i'll do is i'm gonna go over here and say hole type uh hole tap type we'll say tapped so i'm going to tap a thread in it uh drill point this doesn't really matter to be honest because it's a it's going to be a through hole um but the profile we want m6 so i'll select six millimeters from the list and there we go now on extents we've got distance i want this hole just to go through the first piece here i don't want the hole to go all the way into there like that so I select two and then that lets me actually select a face so I want it to go to this face here in between and that makes the hole just go through that face there so checking here uh, we've got m6 by one thread now if we're gonna just basically print this as a hole and we're gonna actually cut the thread with a tap can model the thread if you tick this box here, it says modeled this will actually model the thread and it would actually 3d print the thread for you I don't find that works very well. I don't find that 3D printing the threads really works. So I tend to just untick model and have that just as a plain hole. And uh, then I'll tap it out myself. So we click OK. And it's thinking about it for a second. And there we've got a hole. Now it does show a thread, but that's just um, visuals. That's not actually modeled. That's just showing you that it's a thread. So this isn't actually, it's a, it's a cylindrical hole. It's not a thread. OK, now you notice as well that the point on the other side has disappeared. And that's because if we expand um, the knob, and at this point I realize I've been doing everything in the wrong place. So if we come over here, um, I notice that I've actually selected knob as the component. So what I've actually done is I've, is I've, made, a, I've made a mistake here, and I've done all this work, 
not on the body, but I've done it on the knob component. So you can see that because this is a solid dot here and the body component isn't the selected one. So we're at home with Mr. Cock up a bit there, but that's fine. We'll leave that in. It's all, it's all good stuff. We all make mistakes. So what I'm going to do then is I'm just going to rename it. That's the easiest way because everything is in the, within this component. It's just called the wrong thing now. So we select body and I'll rename this body two. And then the knob, I'll just hit F2 there. We'll call that body. And then on here, F2, and we'll call that knob. So yeah, note to self, uh, click the right thing and do the design in the right component. Okay, right. So in the sketches for the body, definitely the body, we have our sketches. And by default with Fusion 360, when you, um, you do a sketch and then you go back to the design view, it basically hides the sketch. So every sketch you do gets used and hidden. And that's, that's useful, but we want the sketch to come back. So we'll click the eyeball next to the sketch and the sketch is back again. Still a couple of things to do here. We need to drill the hole for the, uh, for the camera mount itself. And we also need to make a hole through here for the bolt to go through. So what I'm going to do, let's finish this side first. I'm going to select this face here. So we've got this face here. I want to drill a hole through this. So I'll right click, create a sketch. And you can see the point on the other sketch. If I rotate around, you can see it still shows us the point we created on the back sketch. So what we can do here, this is this is really useful. I use this a lot. Is we can go uh, create, project, and include project, or hit P, and then this lets us basically sort of borrow sketch elements from one sketch into another. So we've got one sketch here, and another sketch here in front of it. And I want the point from this sketch to be in this sketch here. So I can basically project that point into the other sketch and almost like borrow it um, and then reuse it. So to do that, all we do is we just select the object we want to project, click OK. And now you can see we've got this little magenta colored point on this face, which is projected from the other one. So it's, it means that they're perfectly lined up and they're perfectly aligned. I don't have to go through all the measuring process on this sketch again, um, and we're ready to go. So I hit finish sketch, and then I can here, I can press H for hole, do a hole on this, and it's repeated the previous hole, which is uh, M6. Tapped, but I don't want tapped. I want clearance this time because I want a clearance hole for M6. So the size will be M6, uh, clearance hole, and it's drilling it all the way through again. So I want to select the extents to be two and I'll select this inside face. So it only goes that far. And on, we've got fit and we can choose uh, cl uh, close, normal or loose. If we were machining this in metal, we would probably just go with normal. And this is put it as a 6.6 .6 mil hole. If I select loose, this is going to say make a seven mil diameter hole. But remember that the plastic's going to shrink because we're 3D printing here. So I'm probably going to make this a loose fit because I don't want to have to sort of force the bolt through that first hole. So we'll make that a loose fit. This is saying it's going to make it seven millimeters. It works it all out for us and we click OK. So there we go. We've got our two holes there. So over to the final hole and then we're almost done on this part of the design. So what I'm going to do is hit H, select the hole here. And with this, I'm not going to go and choose a, a thread profile here. I know that we want to make basically make this uh, five five point two millimeters would be a good size for um, a quarter twenty UNC thread. Let me do that again. Actually, I messed up um, on that. Let me fix that. So I'll, sh I'll show you how you can fix things as well because I should have made that through hole and I didn't. I was too busy talking. <laughs> so we'll double click here bring the hole up again and I actually want it to be a through hole so we'll go to this face and then it's all the way through and it's got it as a actually it's got the it's still got it as a threaded hole so let's correct that as well actually because that's not right is it so we just want a simple hole and we want it 5.2 millimeters and okay all right so just and we can check that if I hit I let me just, sorry, let me just hide this sketch a moment. There we go. Tidy it up. If I hit I, that's inspect and I can measure things. So if I select this hole, we can see that it's uh, diameter 5.2 millimeters. That's perfect for what we want. Now there is one more thing I want to do with this. 
I, on the underside, I actually want to put a little counter bore in here so that um, what I don't want is for when when the, the screw thread comes down and goes into the camera. Let me see if I can find what I'm talking about. Here, here we've got a, one of the little uh, 3D printed camera mounts for, say, a GoPro. And we've got a quarter UNC hole in here. So what I want is when this is up against the bottom of the clamp and we screw the thread in, I don't want the thread to be of the screw to be engaged in the clamp at the same time as it's engaged in here. Otherwise, this isn't going to pull up tight. This is always going to sort of be wobbly. So to allow for that, we need to basically have a little recess in the clamp that lets us kind of pull the screw, have the screw thread disconnected from the clamp and screwed into here. Um, let me show you what I mean on the design. What I'm going to do, I'm going to right click this face again. We'll do uh, create a sketch. Actually, we've already got a sketch for that face, so we can probably modify that sketch, which is that one there. And what I'm going to do on this point, we'll hit C for circle, and I'm going to make a hole. Let's say, um, what do we need? So the, the outside diameter of uh, um, a quarter 20 UNC is 6.35 millimeters. That's the um, OD of the thread, the outside diameter of the thread. So if I make this a 7.5, something like that, it doesn't have to be massive, 7.5, but something's going to clear, and I finish the sketch, then what I'm going to do is select that and hit E for extrude. And I'm going to extrude that in, say, three millimeters. So I go minus three. And you can see over here it's changed to cut because it can see that I'm sort of pressing into the model now. And I'll click OK. So what this means here now is, let's tell us something else I can do here is, if I, uh, let me see if I can do a, a section through this. If I go inspect, uh, let's have a look, section analysis. Um, what I'd need actually is I'd need a, a plane to do this on. So what I'm going to do, let me just quickly set this up. So I'm going to measure the distance between these points. So this is 40 millimeters high. So what I want to do is I want to create a plane so that I can do a cross section through this and show you the cross section of it. So if I do construct offset plane, and then I select this plane to be the plane and then the distance to be 20, that's going to create a plane exactly halfway inside the model. And then what we can do is we can go inspect section analysis and I'll hit this plane here like that. Okay. And there we've got a cross section through our part. So what we're going to do when we make this, we're going to thread this hole here. This is going to be threaded quarter 20 UNC. So when I put the screw through, the screw will come out the other side and then it'll be sort of loose, but it won't be able to fall back through the hole. It'll be a captive screw. And this little counter bore here means that I can get the screw thread clear of this thread before I start screwing it into the camera mount. And that means the two threads don't become sort of gridlocked together. I don't want the screw in both threads at once. Otherwise, the thing won't tighten up. It'll just pull backwards and forwards. Excellent. Right. Okay. Let's um, uh, switch off the section just by un checking analysis over here and let's have a look we've got the um construction as well we'll hide that to hide that construction plane that we did and we can hide that sketch and i think that's basically it for the clamp that's the clamp pretty much designed so what we'll do we'll just do a little bit of a, a finessing on it shall we say and i'm going to select this edge and hit f for fill it and you can see it's already zipped around the whole outside of the shape and we can just fill it that, say one millimeter, press one, enter. Just gives it a little radius, makes it feel nicer, and it's not so sharp to the touch. Um, and the printer should be able to handle putting the radius on there quite nicely. So I'll select this edge, hit F, one, oops, one, there we go, enter. And that's looking pretty good. Now, do we want to do anything with this edge inside here? I wonder if we could maybe try chamfer on that. So I'll set, select that edge, chamfer, one millimeter. Okay. All right, we'll go with that, I think, because, you know, that might give a little lead into the edge there. It might give us a little lead in to make it easier to put on. And, uh, yeah, I think we'll call that done. So let's just go back to our home view. And uh, that's our 
finished bracket. So now all we need to do is to design the uh, the screw and then the knob, remembering to select the correct component this time. Okay, so let's uh, start making our screw. So what I'm going to do for this, I'm going to basically model it in place where it's going to end up. You don't have to do this, but this is just uh, convenient to do. So what I want to do is I want to center it on this hole that we made here. So I'm just going to go back into our sketches for the body and show that sketch again. And what we'll do is on the uh, screw, I'm going to show that. I'm going to hide the knob component for the moment. And I'm going to click this little button here next to screw to make this the active component. And what I want to do is do a sketch on this top face here. So I'm going to right click and say create sketch. And that's created the sketch within the screw there. And again, we're going to project include. So I'm going to hit P and then I'm going to select this point and we'll OK that. So we've now got our point as our starting point, as it were. And then what we're going to do is start modeling the uh, the screw thread. And what we're going to do with this really is just a series of extrusions. So I'm going to start with C for circle. I'm going to hit that. And the first diameter we're going to want, this needs to be smaller than the core of the thread. The core of the thread, if you like, is the diameter. So if you imagine the, the uh, teeth of the thread like this, the core is the distance between the, the innermost part of those teeth, the sort of the, the troughs at the bottom of the uh, the sort of wave that the thread pattern makes. So that core for UNC is about 5.2 millimetres. I'm working in metric, so 5.2 mil in, in metric speak. So if I make the inner diameter, say, 5 millimetres, that should be just about right. So if I make this a 5 millimetre diameter circle, and then we're going to need another circle as well because Something that I something I didn't catch in the sketching we did previously was that because I'm making a plastic knob to go on the end of the screw, I can't have it so that the bottom of the screw kind of bears against the top of the clamp. Otherwise, when you do it up, it's just going to screw the, or it's going to like lever the top of the um, the uh, knob off. So we need to actually have like a metal flange at the top of the screw thread to stop it pulling through the clamp, and that should become clear as we go. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just do another circle here. And this doesn't need to be huge. Maybe 10 mil looks probably good for that. So let's do 10. And that's a good starting point. So we'll finish the sketch. And we've got something to work from here. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is we'll just select the top piece here and we'll extrude this up by, say, let's have a look at two millimeters. See what that looks like. It's not bad. That's probably all it needs is a couple of millimeters. Um, something to be aware of when you're modeling like this is I'm using a 27 inch monitor. And when I'm zoomed in like this, this um, two millimeter thick extrusion looks huge. It looks like it's um, massive. What you've got to bear in mind is that it's very easy to kind of undersize things when you're designing this close up. If you zoom it out to, if I just click OK to that, if I zoom it out to more like the actual size, and obviously this depends on what size screen you're watching on, um, but this gives me a better idea. So just bear in mind that it's very easy to make things too small. When you're zoomed in on a 27 inch monitor, things look really massive. And then when you actually create them in real life, they can be really tiny. So there's that kind of, yeah, sort of scale effect can mess you up. Uh, okay, right. So we need to have the, um, the bit of the screw now that's going to extend outwards that the knob's going to go on. So let's hit E and extrude that up and 10 mil, uh, 10 mil is probably okay. We can work with that. Okay. So now we need to work the other way. Let me just uh, hide the body of uh, and the sketch of the other part. And then what we want to do now is take this inner circle that we made and we want to extrude this down. So bringing the body back in of the other part quickly, uh, let's just work out how long we need to make this thread. So basically the, the shaft that's going to go through this hole we want the thread that goes on the end that, that's going to sort of lock into the uh, the camera adapter. We want that thread to start just before the end of the clamp so that it can pull it up nice and close. And the thickness of this clamp here is eight millimeters. So if we take this and we extrude this circle out by say seven, click OK, you can see that the this part stops just shy of the face of the clamp. And because this is where we want this thread to start. So we want the thread to begin before the end. If the thread started after 
the edge of the clamp, it would never tighten up. It, it, it couldn't pull it up against the surface. So we want to allow a little bit of extra. Do you know, tell you what, actually, I'm going to change that again. I'm going to, I'm going to change that down to six millimeters. That gives us two millimeters of thread inside. It allows a little bit of squish and a little bit of wiggle room. And it doesn't matter. As long as the thread doesn't actually interfere with this counter bore, which you can see there, it doesn't, then we're going to be good. All right, now the next bit we need is we're going to need to create another sketch for the threaded part. So I'm going to click on this end, right click, create sketch. And what I'm going to do is hide this main body of the clamp. And I'm going to create a point. Now I don't know if I can just pick up the center of that. We'll try that by pressing P and no, it won't let us do that. Let me just see if I can center a circle in the middle. Seems to be picking that up okay. Okay, good, yeah, let's, it's gonna let me put a circle there. So the outside diameter we want for the uh, quarter 20 UNC screw is 6.35 millimeters, obviously a quarter of an inch if you're working in uh, US units. So 6.35, we'll finish the sketch. So now you can see we've got this sort of wider diameter. I'll select both of those and for this, we want to extrude this again, and this wants to be um, two millimeters to take it to the face of the clamp, plus however long the screw needs to be for the camera mount. Now, I had a bit of a look into this, and it seems that the sort of the, the length of a, uh, the thread on a tripod or a camera adapter is generally about sort of four and a half, five millimeters long. So we're going to go with five mil long. So that means we need two millimeters to clear the clamp plus five millimeters. So a handy feature you can do in Fusion 360 is you could do uh, two plus five. You can actually do maths in these little boxes. And there you go. So that's kind of the shape of the screw. Let's bring the body back in for this part. And we can see that. Now, if we, you can see that the body is all kind of like ghosted out and just wireframe makes it hard to see what's going on. So if we select the main component, like the parent, then it makes both of the components solid. And if we bring back in our analysis, we can have a look at the cross section. And we can see what's going on. Now I can actually see a problem here. You can see that this uh, extrusion part here is separate from the main shaft, the way it's designed. Now that's probably because I didn't actually pick up this inner part of the circle when I did the extrusion. So we can go back in and we can fix that. But you can see here, you can see sort of the general kind of idea now. We're going to basically model a knob that fits over here so we can turn that with like a thumb screw. And this little flange here just stops the thing being pulled through. So as we tighten the screw up, the flange stops the knob from being pulled against the plastic instead the metal flanges and the thing will lock together. So let's just see if we can fix that little uh, problem there quickly. So we'll turn off the analysis and we'll turn off the body components because we don't want that. And we're going to want to go and find our sketch that we did that off, which is probably the first sketch, I would say. And yeah, you can see there we've got this sort of discrepancy between the two rings here. Um, so we've got that area. So if I hit E, I can extrude this up to, and I'll click this top face with a join, and that will make it all one piece. And then if we go back to the uh, analysis, you can see it's a solid piece now. That's probably a better way of doing it than that. I, I've kind of added on an extra extrusion to fix the previous problem. What I should really have done probably is gone back through the timeline in Fusion and found where I went wrong and fixed it there. But yeah, that's going to be good enough for government work, as they say. All right, so let's just show the um, body again of the uh, the body of the body. I guess that makes sense. And we'll hide the sketches. So get rid of that sketch. And there you go. That's looking a lot healthier now. So this uh, this part that's, that's uh, sectioned in yellow, we're going to be machining that on the lathe. We're going to make that as a as a part. Oh, there we go. A bit of gimbal lock there. One of the one of the problems I've got here is because the way I modelled this, I've modelled it in, in the right orient orientation so it will 3D print bottom up. I didn't have to because you can flip it around when we come to the 3D printing bit. But uh, 
because I designed it that way, it makes it harder to actually move it around it. So you get this gimbal lock thing where it doesn't want to go in the right place. But anyway, anyway, it doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. Um, yeah, so we're going to be machining that bolt. And like I said, you don't have to actually machine this part yourself. If you want to sort of follow along with this, you just use a quarter UNC bolt. <laughs> just literally get a bolt, saw it off the right length, put it in. Okay, it won't be captive. You could probably pop an O-ring over it. So you could probably say, imagine here that you didn't have this top piece. You just had this bit here and this was a bolt. Um, you could probably just like get a o rubber O-ring and put it over there to kind of hold it in place. So you don't have to be all elaborate with this and you don't have to own a lathe and you don't have to do any metal work other than buy a bolt, maybe saw the end off it. So that's all you would really need to do. Okay, now there is one other thing we need to do with this um, screw. If we hide the body and we get rid of the analysis is we do need to put a flat on here so we can key it into the the knob we're going to make. So I'm just going to make sure I've got the screw highlighted as our component. I'm just going to select the top, just making sure that I do have the screw selected as the active component. Right click and we'll create a sketch and we'll bring it back into view. And what I want to do here is I want to just create a line across the middle. So let's go L. Uh, that's good. That's picking up the middle bit. And if I do this, what I'm doing here basically is, is I move the cursor, I see I get a circle appears. And then if I then move up vertically, it sort of locks to that plane. And now it's locked to the edge. So I can click and then go down vertically to there. And I've got a line that perfectly bisects that center. So let's do finish sketch, see what we've got. There we go, we've got a semicircle there. And then what I wanna do is extrude that down. Um, do we wanna go all the way down to there? Probably not. Let's go down say eight millimeters and then do the cut operation. So now we've got this kind of uh, keyway that if we make the inside of the knob the opposite shape to that, then the knob will actually go on and it'll have something to physically kind of lock against. And we're probably gonna glue it on anyway. So we'll make the knob slightly smaller, we'll glue it on so it's got a fighting chance of not rotating, but that's good because it just stops, it resists the sort of the tendency of the knob to spin. We're not gonna be putting this under massive force anyway, but it's just a, a neat way of doing it. So, okay, well that's the, uh, the screw made, let's bring all the parts in again and uh, see what it all looks like. So it's starting to come together now. And the final part before we can get the 3D printer is making the knob to go on the end of the screw. Okay, so let's make the knob for this thing then. Right, so what we do is we'll show the knob component and we'll enable it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start with a sketch again, as always. So I'm going to start from here, the base of this uh, screw flange. So I'm going to make sure the knob selected, not falling for that again. <laughs> uh, right click here and oops, no, try again. Select it, right click, create sketch. And what we want to do is uh, let's have a quick think here. Uh, I think I want to project and include this circle. So let me just go create and project include, project, and we're going to choose the circle of that flange and we're going to click OK. We got a, we don't have a center point as well. So we'll do that. That's fine. And that's it. Finish that. Select that. And also let me just, oops, let me hide the, um, the knob component that no not the knob i want to hide the screw body that's what i want to do and then we select the inner bit as well and i'll show the screw body again so i want to sort of reference that and then we'll extrude this up until it goes beyond where that screw thread is so let me just have a look at that so that's probably pretty good and we want this to uh we want the screw sort of the the Neurally bit on the top of the, the knob to sort of be above the clamp so that we can get our fingers on it. So uh, let me take that up just a little bit more, make that a little bit high. What I'm also going to do is I'm just going to taper this out a little bit. So if on the uh, extrusion I taper it at say 10 degrees, maybe too much, five degrees, three. Yeah, that's probably okay. So we'll do that. And then what we want to do here is select the top, right click, create a sketch, and we'll do another circle, which will form the actual sort of 
the bit that we twiddle. So we'll make that say 25. Nice round number. Okay, that. Finish the sketch, and then we'll select this, and we'll extrude this up a nice amount that looks about right, say 6 mil, maybe 7 mil for luck. How's that going to look? Sort of, uh, let me get my measuring stick. Right, so let's have an eyeball of that. So 7 mil would give us, let's have a look a knob that thick on the top see what i mean on the screen this looks really massive but that's the reality of how thick the top of that knob would be and i was sort of thinking maybe more like 14 to double i think that would be a you know easier thing to sort of get a grip of so let's go 14 and you see that looks really huge that looks ridiculously huge um but that's how it worked out so it may be over the top, it may not be, but that's what we've got. All right. So next thing I want to do is I want to sort of make some grips in the top. So we'll right click, create a sketch. And what we'll do is we're going to make a circle. So let's, uh, let's hit C and we'll put a circle um, somewhere on here. It doesn't really matter where exactly, but we'll draw out a circle, which will be sort of for, for the grips of the knob we're making and I'll oh, sort of gauge the sort of size we want. Um, let's go, let's try eight. Yeah, it's got eight mil, see what that does. And then what we can do is we can actually create a pattern. So let's go create circular pattern and we've selected the object there and the center point will be the center point. And then we just basically tell it how many we want. So I'm not sure why this has gone all small on me like this, but there we go. Three, four, five, not sure, five or six. What do you reckon? Five. Let's try five. And we do that. And then we finish the sketch. And then we can select these inner pieces here. And then we can flip over and we hit extrude. So I just click E and then click this bottom face. And that just cuts out those parts there. That looks all right. I think that'll be okay. And again, we can finesse it from there. So if we then select these vertical edges like this, we work around, select all of these. And uh, if you know an easier way to select all these rather than clicking them individually, please let me know. I would love to know how to not have to do that manually. So hit F for fill it, and then we can just bring these in to a point we're happy with them. That or that, what do you reckon? I like that, I think that's good. Okay, all right, so let's see if we can fill at the top just by selecting one, see if it'll pick up the whole chain. And it does, excellent, awesome. And we'll take that down to say, what should we do with that? Say, oops, <laughs> went too far, three mil. I think three mil looks pretty nice actually. That's pretty cool. All right, let's try the bottom edge as well. So we'll fill it that in, see how far we can take that. Uh, now that would go three as well, just. So do we want to go three on that? We could go slightly less and then sh and fill at the, uh, the bottom of the curve as well. How would that look though? That's pretty good. Okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going to fill it that slightly less. But what we'll do is we'll select this and then we'll fill it this out a little bit as well. There we go. And again, like we said about not having sort of harsh edges, um, by making that a curve, it, just, it helps to sort of relieve the stresses on it as well. If you have sharp edges like that, then cracks can form. Whereas if you have a fillet, fillet um, it's a lot more stress and strain resistant. All right, so that's the knob modeled. All we need to do now for the knob is basically, um, we're gonna see if, we'll see if we can Boolean the screw piece out of the shape of the knob there. So uh, let's get rid of the body for the moment. And I'm just gonna save my work as well. So we'll save that as uh, the knob. There we go. And what we'll do is let's just select the whole thing if we can. 
And I'm going to go modify and we'll do combine. So the target body will be say this one and the tool body will be this one. We'll say keep tools and the operation will be a cut. And then we'll do okay. And then we'll hide the screw. And bada bing, bada boom, Betty boop. There we go. We've got the, uh, the relevant shape cut out of the middle there. So that will actually mate with the screw components and they all lock together. And again, we can kind of, um, we can test that with a quick section analysis just to make sure everything looks good with that. So what we'll do is we'll create a plane. So let's go right click offset plane. And I'm just going to eyeball this into the middle. I don't know, it doesn't have to be perfect. So let's just get this, uh, get some a side view and we'll just get that kind of in the middle there. 21, so 20.5 maybe. 0.5, okay. And then we'll go inspect section analysis and we'll select our plane, which is already done. And there you can see the sort of the, the inner shape of what we've got, which is uh, pretty good. Um, analysis, there we go. So looking good. And let's see what we've got on our other analysis as well. Oops. Uh, bring the body back in. So there we go. Nice little cross section through both the parts. All right. So next up, preparing to 3D print.